Alright guys, so I'm back with another Kazuha video. So this video is going to be a follow-up video to my previous Kazuha video. Now if you haven't seen that video yet, I discussed what I think Kazuha is probably going to be and how and how he works and all of that. If you're interested in that, go check it out at the right corner. I recommend you check it out so you know exactly what Kazuha does. Because this video is more of a follow-up since I'm going to go through the, his artifact sets and weapon choices. So uh, yep, I'm going to assume you've already seen my previous video, and if you have, let's continue. Let's let's get right into it. So, Kazuha artifact sets. Kazuha is one of the most complex characters in the game, if not the most complex character, because of how he works. And currently, there isn't really a dedicated artifact set for him, which causes a bit of problem. Now, I do think that. Playing Kazuha, you actually want to do a pretty good amount of reactions with him because uh, of his high elemental mastery here. So I, I feel like you'd really want to do some swirls and also have a bunch of elemental reactions as well so you can swirl all of them at once. And the, the damage stacks up really well. You can see how well it actually stacks up in Sucrose DPS because Sucrose DPS actually works really really well. and. Kazuha is kind of, it's basically a better version that does more damage. And also, uh, some of you have already probably seen this, where in 1.6 they're going to buff elemental reactions. A lot of people took this as an electro buff, which it is an electro buff. But this is also actually a pretty dang good Kazuha buff. Because when a character reaches level 60 or above, the damage caused by major reactions, i.e. Electrocharge, Superconduct, Overloaded, Swirl, and Shatter will be increased. If you're playing a Swirl build, Swirl Elemental Reactions build, you're going to have Overloaded, Superconduct, Electrocharge there as well to get as many reactions as possible. So this is a pretty big buff for Kazuha. And Elemental Mastery is getting a buff as a whole because damage bonus provided by Elemental Mastery is increased. So Elemental Mastery has a lot more value, which is a pretty good buff to Kazuha as well. And with that, and with that said, so far I think probably the two best artifact sets for Kazuha are four set Viridison if I can find it, four set Viridison, or two set Viridison, and then two set Noblesse Oblige. Now this is why. So the 4-set Viridison set is pretty simple. It increases Swirl damage by 60%. This was why I was talking about Swirl damage and Elemental Reactions a bit in the beginning of this video, because this is pretty big. It increases Swirl damage by 60%. And he's a Nemo, so most of his attacks will be Swirls anyway. And he also decreases opponent's Elemental Resistance to the elements infused in the Swirl by 40% for 10 seconds. So he gets an extra 60% swirl damage bonus, and he also buffs your other characters because you're probably going to run him alongside other characters anyway to get those reactions in the first place. And those reactions will be even stronger uh, with this decreased opponent's elemental resistance. Because decreasing elemental resistance by 40% is basically the same as 25% damage bonus, which is amazing. 25% damage bonus around, across the board is really, really good. This increased swirl damage by 60%, it only increases the swirl, which is which is the elemental reactions that are happening. So it's not a 60% damage bonus increase, but it's a pretty significant amount, regardless. Because this just simply means any reactions involving swirl, you get an extra 60% out of them, which is great, because you want to do many reactions with Kazuha, I imagine, as a DPS. And now the more the more simple build is two set Verdison Venera because two set Anemo damage bonus plus fifteen percent, and then Nobis Supplies elemental burst damage plus twenty percent. The reason I think that is so good is because his alt is very strong. Like at level eight, he does four hundred nineteen point eight four percent. He does DOT, which is one hundred ninety two percent, and then additional elemental damage which is fifty seven point six. Now, based on what we've seen, we know that the DOT hits 5 times. So, the base hit is 419.84 and then plus 192, 5 times. He does 1379% damage on his ult. 
And he also has additional elemental damage, which I, which I think probably goes into the DOT. I'm not sure if it goes into Slash, because it has to be infused first. So if so, since the DOT attacks five times, I can add this five times once again. So yeah, in total, his all at level 8 is doing 1,667%. That's actually really, really high. For a, for a all that's only 60 energy costs, like Zhong Li's does like 800% or something. And Zhong Li's all is pretty strong. Kazuha's one is 1,667%, just like that. Which is pretty damn insane. So that 20% elemental burst damage is going to multiply straight into here, which will turn the 1,600 into 2,001%, which is going to be absolutely nuts. So that's why I think 2-set Verdicent and 2-set Noblesse Oblige is probably the best, aside from Verdicent 4-set, and why, and why I think it's better than like if we run, for example, 2-set Verdicent and then 2-set Wanderers for the extra Elemental Mastery. I'm not exactly sure how well, how well this is going to work, It'll depend on the buffs, but as of right now, this is not worth it. 80 Elemental Mastery, it's just not enough to beat that 20% Elemental Burst. And Attack plus 18% from 2-set Gladiator, also not enough. Because Elemental Burst plus 20% is pretty huge. And his damage modifier on his ult is very, very high. So why not bump up that, that ult? So yeah, I think th those are the two top picks for, for, uh, Kaz for Kazuha in terms of Artifact Set. Another artifact set that could work is this one, Instructor. If, but this is only if you're running support Kazuha, because it's only a four-star set, and the amount of DPS you lose from a four-star set compared to a five-star set is massive. But I say this is a uh, support set because it increases elemental mastery by 80, which is fine. That helps his second passive, which boosts damage, which boosts damage uh, based on elemental mastery. And he also has this, where upon triggering an elemental reaction, which you will anyway, since he's a Nemo, you will increase all party members' elemental mastery by 120 for 8 seconds. That is pretty dang good, all, all around, most of the time. And especially with the elemental mastery buff in 1.6, it's gonna be even better. But even right now, this is actually a very solid pass passive, where if you're running full support Kazuha, then Instructor is a very good choice for you. However, I still think as a support, Force, Viridescent, Venera probably still beats it out because this extra damage is very high and this increased swirl damage as well. So that's for his artifacts. Now his weapons. Also just a side note as well. Artifacts, I have a sneaking suspicion that they are going to add new artifacts that are going to focus on plunging because Kazuha Plunge is actually very strong. Like his mod, like his uh, plunge damage modifiers are actually the exact same as Xiao's, and his plunge is also really good because it also has a very nice crowd control as well. And I I have a sneaking suspicion that they're going to add a new artifact set that has something to do with plunging, which which will help Kazuha a lot and will be a buff to Xiao. So keep that in mind as well. But for now, these are what these are the artifacts that we have currently have to deal with. So for weapons. For weapons, this is quite an interesting one. Because I actually have quite a couple weapons here that I think could work great on him. So first off, we're going to start with a 3-star classic, the Harbinger of Dawn. The Harbinger of Dawn is a very, very good sword. The only condition is that you need to keep your HP above 90% which is not that hard to do, in the overworld at least. In Abyss, you're gonna need a shield for this to really work, or you're just really good at dodging, but most of the time you need a shield for this. But if you have a really strong shield, then Harbinger of Dawn, in terms of DPS, is actually better than almost every other 4-star in the game. Just because it gives crit rate, it gives 28% crit rate at Refinement 5, which is humongous. And it gives 46.9% crit damage. What this sword allows you to do is it allows you to get to 200% crit damage and 50% crit rate extremely easily, which is why I use this sword very, very often. Although its base attack is low, 
the insane crit rate and the insane crit damage make up for it. Because it is the only weapon in the game that actually gives crit rate and crit damage at once by this much of an amount. And yeah, uh, this sword is just really good. Even though it's a 3 star sword, I would say it's a fake 3 star sword. Because other than this, other than this condition, you're actually getting like really, really insane damage from Harbinger of Dawn. So that's my first candidate here because Harbinger of Dawn is really free to play friendly because it's a 3 star weapon. And now let's get into the second free-to-play friendly option, the Iron Sting. One thing that's really good about Kazuha is the fact that he's he's so free-to-play free to play friendly when it comes to his weapons because the sword weapon archetype is just really good, especially for him. So here, Iron Sting, you want to be doing many reactions with Kazuha if you want to play him as a DPS. So Elemental Mastery is always nice. And Elemental Mastery buffs his second passive as well, which increases damage bonus based on Elemental Mastery. So that is pretty huge, 165. It also has a good base attack at 510. And this passive is really nice as well. Dealing Elemental Damage increases all damage by 6% for 6 seconds. Maximum 2 stacks. This passive, you'll have at least 1 stack active all, all the time thanks to his plunge, but if you can get his ult pretty often, then you'll have the max 2 stacks up basically almost permanently, because his ult lasts very long. His ult lasts, it, it's like Sucrose where it lasts 8 seconds and it's 60 energy, and it attacks 6 times in total. So Iron Sting's passive is also very easy to proc with Kazuha. So again, it's just a it's just a really really good weapon and now here's another free-to-play option if you've been here since dragon spine then you probably got festering desire to refinement rank 5 but i do not think festering desire is a good choice for kazuha because energy recharge is fine but kazuha is already kind of good with energy base attack 510 is also is nice but the passive doesn't really help him that much because the passive is increases elemental skill damage by 16% and elemental skill crit rate by 6%. His elemental skill is here. It does pretty good damage, yes. However, his main source of damage if you're doing DPS is plunging attack and ult, not his E. So you want a weapon that can buff his plunge or his ult. Like for example the Harbinger of Dawn that buffs everything because crit. Iron Sting buffs all damage in the passive. Festering Desire only buffs the E, which I do not think is worth it in my opinion. So Festering Desire can be cut out as a candidate. The Alley Flash is also a pretty good option if you have Alley Flash. Because it has extremely high base attack for a 4 star, 620. That's 5 star level attack stat right there. But its substat of Elemental Mastery isn't that high, it's only at 55, but that's okay thanks to the passive and its really high base attack. Its passive is increases damage dealt by the character equipping this weapon by 12%, but if you take any damage, it disables this effect for 5 seconds. So to really utilize this passive properly, you gotta have a shield character. Because as good as dodging is, you're not going to dodge every hit 100% of the time. Most likely you'll run out of stamina and then you'll get hit and then this passive is just gone So you want to so you want to use a shield character So that you can fully utilize this passive and yeah overall This is just a really really good weapon to use for Kazuha and now before we get into the five stars I want to bring attention to another four star weapon That seems weird, but might actually work Sacrificial Sword. Yes. It's a weird sword because it has energy recharge and really low base attack, 454. That energy recharge is really high, but energy is not a problem for Kazuha, most likely. So why do I say it's so good? Because it's passive. After using an elemental skill, there is a 40% chance to end its own cooldown, can occur once every 30 seconds. 
Now, in for a sacrificial sword, unless you have it at a high refinement, like refinement 3, 4, or 5, I don't recommend using it because 40 to 50% seems too low for me. But 60, 70, and 80 seems high enough. And the reason why I say that sacrificial sword could actually turn out to be really good is because his E only brings him up to the air once to plunge. But if you use Sacrificial Sword and the passive actually procs, you get to plunge twice immediately. It's an interesting thought to consider. I'm not exactly sure how well that would actually work, but it's going to be something that I'll try out. And also that Energy Recharge does make his ult come really fast, and his ult, as I discussed earlier, does some pretty ridiculous damage. So, Sacrificial Sword could end up actually being super super good. But this is a bit more theoretical, since it's not as straightforward as like Iron Sting, Alley, Flash, or Harbinger of Dawn. But I do think Sacrificial Sword, it, de it depends on how, how well this passive can proc, and how important it is. Because the E cooldown is only 6 seconds, so that's not that much at all. That's basically the same as Beidou's counter cooldown, and it feels like Beidou doesn't even have a cooldown most of the time. But I, I just thought that this, this sword was a, a good food for thought. Now let's get into the 5 star weapons. So first off, Aquila Favonia. If you're going to run Aquila Favonia, I'm not exactly sure if it'll work. It does have extremely high base attack at 674, which is pretty nuts. And it has 41.3% physical damage, which wouldn't really help Kazuha that much, unless you're playing physical Kazuha, which would be kind of weird. I guess I guess it could help. I guess it would still be better than most 4 stars, regardless, because the base attack is just really high. However, I don't think it'll be as good as the other 5 star weapons on this list. But the passive is really nice. Attack is increased by 20%. And when you take damage, you regenerate HP equal to your attack, and you deal 200% of attack as damage to surrounding opponents. You don't have to worry about this 200% of attack as damage that much, because it's usually not that much damage. This heal is really nice though, and attack plus 20% is always nice. But yeah, for Kazuha specifically, I think he wants an, an, an anemo focused build. That, swirl, that swirls a lot of reactions, so Aquila Favonia probably wouldn't work as well as the other 5 star weapons, but it's gonna be better than 4 star weapons of course because of that high base attack. Sky, Skyward Blade is interesting, because it has a pretty nice base attack at 608, it has energy recharge 55.1, so that helps Kazuha get his ult up pretty quickly, and his ults, yeah. <laughs> so that's nice. And the passive is crit rate increased by 4%, and it gains sky piercing might upon using an elemental burst, which increases your movement speed, your attack speed, and your normal and charge hits deal additional damage equal to 20% of attack. It would be really cool if this also included plunging, but it doesn't, which is kind of a shame. So this passive doesn't actually really do much either. It probably still edges out Aquila Favonia a bit, because energy recharge is a bit more useful than physical damage for Kazuha in my opinion. I think Skyward Blade probably will come out a bit on top because the ult is just so strong. So anyways, yep, moving on to the next 5 star weapon, Summit Shaper. Summit Shaper, if you have a shield, is really 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 strong. Because it has 608 attack, but it also has a really high attack percent subset of 49.6%. It also increases shield strength on the passive, and Basically, hitting your opponent once gives you 4% attack for 8 seconds, and you can get a maximum of 5 stacks. So you get 20% attack, and if you have a shield, it goes up to 40% attack. I think Summit Shaper will probably be better than Aquila and Skyward Blade, because attack because this attack percent and this passive is going to make Kazuha quite strong. It's going to bring him up to a lot of attack, which is really nice. Although, although it is a bit more personal preference, which one you would prefer, like Skyward Blade has energy recharge. If you want to get ults way more often, then it's probably better than Summit Shaper, which, again, getting ults more often is probably actually better than like just base, just giving more attack. But I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, now Primordial Jade Cutter. Primordial Jade Cutter is a really good sword. 
although it has really low base attack for 5 star, 542, it has an enormous crit rate of 44.1, which allows you to just focus on crit damage entirely on your artifact substats, which is really, really nice. And also the passive is pretty good as well. The HP increase doesn't do anything for him, but attack, attack bonus based on 1.2% of the wheeler's max HP. His max HP at, thir at 90 is 13k, so he could probably get to somewhere like 17k HP pretty easily if you have him at yeah, level 90. And especially with this passive in HP increased by 20%, you could probably get close to 20k. Let, well, let's just say 18k for a, a, for a safe estimate. 0.012, you'll get 216 extra attack, which is pretty nice, I'd say. And now, of course, Kazuha's signature weapon, Boreas Precocity. It's a five. It's gonna be his signature five-star weapon, and of course, it's really good for him because the base attack is 608. It's pretty high, and the elemental mastery subset is 198, which is really, really good. It's basically an extra 200 for him, and that's pretty big. The passive is also just really, really good as well. Because first off, it's a really long passive, but basically, to summarize, it increases damage by 10%, just just like that. You just get 10% increased damage, which is already huge. But then, when, when the character with this weapon triggers an elemental reaction, they gain a Sigil of Rebellion. And this effect can be triggered once every 0.5 seconds. So all you need to do really is just swirl twice, which... Since he's a Nemo, it's very easy for him to swirl anyway, because a Nemo swirls with basically everything other than Geo and itself. And you only need to do it twice, because you only need two Sigils of Rebellion. And what that does is, it increases his normal charge and plunging attack damage by 16%, and increases attack by 20%. That is pretty big, because he gets basically a 16% extra damage on his plunging attack, and then an extra attack plus 20%. That is, that is quite a strong passive. It's a very, very strong sword. And it's very clear that it is made specifically for Kazuha. Because it's such a strong sword. So yeah. If I had to currently rank these, I'll try, I'll try my best to do a mathematical analysis of the weapons in a later video. I'll have it done at some point. But as of right now, based on what I'm seeing, this, Bo this Boreas Precocity is obviously number one, the number one sword for him. I think the Skyward Blade and Summit Shaper and Primordial Jade might be tied for second. And Aquilia Favonia is probably third for the five star weapons. And for the four star slash three star weapons, Sacrificial Sword is a very honorable choice, honorable mention choice. Because it might work, it might not work, but this is, but this is, uh, this is the purpose of this video, it's just kind of theorizes about what weapons would be the best for him. Iron Sting is going to be a very good weapon for him. The Alley Flash is going to be a very good weapon for him. And the Harbinger of Dawn, of course, is a classic that's basically good. That's basically one of the best damage dealing swords for every single sword character in this game. Because all of, because every single character loves crit rate and crit damage, which this sword gives an absolute crap ton of. And yep, I think that's re I think that's really all that's really all of the swords that are good. There's also this dark iron sword, which actually is also pretty interesting, because it has 401 attack. It has 141 elemental mastery, but it's passive. Upon causing an overloaded superconduct electro charge or an electro infused swirl reaction, which this is our this is our key here, electro infused swirl reaction. Attack is increased by 40% for 12 seconds. There doesn't seem to be any cooldown to this either, so we can have this completely infinitely. And since this, and since this is a 3 star, we're taking the refinement level 5. But even though the Dark Iron Sword does seem pretty appealing, I think the Iron Sting is just a better version of that. Because the Iron Sting basically does the same thing, it, but instead of increasing attack, it increases damage, which is better. And it also gives more elemental mastery, I believe. So, yep, that's about it for the weapons. 
So, so uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this follow-up video about me theorizing what his artifact set and his best weapons are going to be. I'll probably also make another video about Kazuha, specifically about what teams I would put him in, because I have because I don't think I've talked about that yet, like what teams I would put Kazuha in. And and since Kazuha is such a complex character, he actually works in many, many, many different team combinations. And I think it's actually very interesting. So yeah, be on the lookout for that video eventually. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you guys did, please subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.